And we are live. Hey. hey. So let me go to the YouTube side. I'm going to pull that up. It's not live on YouTube yet. It's got a little bit of a delay. Are you feeling better today? It's yeah, better. I... I had a really bad Charlie horse in my foot that woke me up at about 4.30. And when that happens, I can't go back to sleep right away. And I was just really tired to begin with. So I laid back down. And usually I can't nap during the day either. I was tired. I slept. And when I woke up after sleeping like that, then the broken up sleep, I just felt like doo-doo. You know, really. Yeah. I went to bed at 11 last night. and. Hello, anybody that's there in the chat. Say hello to us. We're just going to chat away here. Hello. Oh, I can't write in the chat, right? Uh, you cannot if you open the YouTube phone. page and, you and mute it. So I went to bed at 11 last night, and after 4, I was still laying there awake. And I finally fell asleep and then woke up at, like, 9.30, and then I went back to sleep. I, well, I watched that video that you made about uh, making your own punch needle frame protector. Yeah, I probably should have did that on a table because when I watched it back, I was like, this just looks sloppy. Nah. But, but it's like that's I a good said idea. In the video, it's like if I wasn't filming, this is where I'd be doing it. So yeah, right. I wanted to show, you know, that besides. <laughs> If I do it at a table, I only have, um, I don't have a kitchen table. I only have a folding table that I use for crafting. Yeah. It's over there against the wall behind all my wall decorations that are packed up. And I would have to get that out and set that all up just to do that video. So I just decided to do it sitting in my chair. Okay, I so let's am. see. Is anybody here going to say hello? It says we have four watching. Hi. That's so two of them are us. Yeah. If you post a comment there and say hello and please give me a thumbs up and we'll sit and chat with you. So I have my fancy wall art back here. This is my old tattered flag and in a little bit I'll bring it close up and show the finished thing. I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it scalloped and not. I like do that. And not do the straight lines. I really, it's so pretty in person. And when I take pictures of it, it really brightens it up. And I don't like it like that. I like, it's dark in person. But, um, it came I know, out. It makes good. a big difference. Yeah, it came out really nice. I just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I might go to Hobby Lobby and see what kind of stuff Teresa Kogut finds some really nice frames and things there. So I might go there and take it with me after I turn the edges back and I will do a video of turning the edges back and show how I do that. So Teresa Kogut gave me a shout out in her video this weekend. Oh, how cool. Yeah. She, um, and she shared in the description, she shared my YouTube link and my Etsy link. Oh, good. Did that That's, drive a little bit of people there? I, I don't think so. That's like the third time she's done it. And the first time, I probably got a couple hundred people. Whoa. New subscribers. And then the second time, I got a couple. And I don't know. Since yesterday, I think I've gotten three new subscribers. Huh. So it's hard to say if it's from that or not, unless they yeah. tell me. Sometimes they'll say, Teresa Kogut sent me over. Oh, so, yeah. Hi, Tina. She said, I had bought two of the steering wheel covers, and your video helped me know what to do with them. Yeah, it's not. Good. You probably could do it by machine. Um, I'm just lazy, and my machine has been in a box for over a year, and I, I'm not going to get it out for that, but. I was thinking last night, like, you probably should go back over it with the machine and just to firm it up. But, tight, yeah. But you know what? My other one that I've been using for a long time, it's just fine. 
And I did it the exact same way. I did it by hand. So I think it'll be fine. See, here's, I'll describe this real quick. This is why I don't like punching with yarn. The, uh, the. Oh, Let me put you full screen. Hold on. Okay. Not punching, hooking with yarn. Okay. The, um, gosh, I never know where, which direction. There we go. I know it's backwards. Yeah. The loops, um, they just want to fall wherever they want and you can't get a nice straight line, you know? Hi, Jackie. Yeah. So what they say with punch needle is to punch on the inside of the line and not on the line. Yeah. Well, the only way I can keep it straight though is by punching on the line because I have a tendency like my driving to veer off. <laughs> if you try to punch like right up against it, that might work. I yeah. can't, I'm trying to find the end of this Valdani thread and I can't find it. So let me go back to this. Yeah, I was going to say, you can take me off the big this. screen now. <laughs> I have this Valdani pearl cotton and I can't find the end. I'm trying to figure out the best spot to put my yarn here. <laughs> Excuse me. Jackie, you know what I like the most about punch needle? Like I've been wanting to do wool applique for like a week I've been wanting to start a project but that means getting the table out putting it up getting all the wool cutting all the pieces ironing the freezer paper on then cutting all that and it's just so much more work than just tracing a design put it on the frame grab your thread and punch I, I think this is like you know even if somebody was like had mobility issues and they were handicapped you know and they were chair bound this is just like the punch needle is just like so easy for them. Yeah, that's true. It's more um, mobile. No, it's more sedentary is what it is. Well, I mean, it's easier yeah. to be mobile with it, like uh, to take it with you to sit. You know, you can't. it's hard to take a rug and applique and all the little pieces and all that stuff to do that. But punch needle, like you said, once the design is drawn out, all you have is a couple skeins of yarn or um, floss and your needle, you know. So when I punch, I use two strands. Um, so I use the outside one and then I pull one from the middle. I couldn't find the end. So what I end up doing sometimes is I just pull this whole little knot of thread out and then... I'm just going to snip that off. Let me see near the camera. Snip that off there near the center and tuck that in, but not so far that I can't find it again. Then I will grab the end of the regular one and the end of this little bunch here and put them together. And then I have two strands until this little one runs out. And if I don't use it all, I just kind of like stick it back there in the hole until the next time I need that color. You are just so full of little handy tips and tricks. You know that, lady. Well, I think probably everybody is. It's just a matter of remembering to share them and tell people. I don't. I, I've learned. I used to punch needle all the time. Now, everything I've learned, I've done trial and error, just self-taught, you know. And just from watching you and listening to you, I have learned um, to hone the techniques better, you know? Well, that's so good that's a little shot out there, Doreen. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, teaching is not my favorite thing to do. Really? Yeah. It's um, when I was in college, I took photography. And I worked as, you know, you get the student work jobs on campus. Yeah. And I worked in the photo lab and I would set up all the chemicals because we, you know, developed our own film. Mm -hmm. And That's I would amazing. set them all up for the class, but I didn't like, I didn't want to teach the class. Yeah. So I just didn't really like teaching. And then last year I started teaching punch needle. And I realized that I didn't mind that. But, like, 
to sit and teach somebody how to do um, like computer stuff. Oh, no, no. I don't have the patience for that. Yeah, I don't have the patience to learn it. <laughs> My daughter tries to, I had to do a lot of that HTML and stuff though. Back in the day when I had my own website and I had a, a website builder. Uh -huh. And I forgot a lot of it. Well, now the programs that they use, you just insert your photos, you type in what you want, and then it, you know, it's called what you see is what you get or whatever. W Y or W Y. Anyways. Um, but my daughter, when I got my Mac computer. I've always used just Windows program and Mac is a whole other animal. And um, anyway, she tried showing me stuff, but she didn't even know some of it. A lot of stuff I had to just learn on my own, just clicking buttons and pointing here and there. And, you know, there's a lot of YouTube stuff that I figure out on my own, but there's also, because I'm in a YouTube community with the RV community. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like I'm in live stream chats with those people every day of the week. Yeah. At, with the same group of people. And so a lot of them have been doing it for years and some of them are really computer whiz. So I have a place to ask questions. Yeah, that's good. If I want to know how to do something. And I learned something the other day, like when you put the tags in the video. And I learned that you can actually copy because you have to sit there and come up with what tags you're going to put in the video so that it will show up in a search engine for people to watch it. And I learned the other day that there's a copy button that you can copy and then paste into a different video if like, like this would be punch needle, needle punch, punch needle embroidery, you know, right. all the different little tags that you could think of that people would be searching for. And if your videos are similar, you can just copy and then you go to the next video and paste it into that one. So you don't have to sit there and come up with them all and remember which ones you used and Right. And I didn't know that. And I've been doing it for almost a year. And it's the buttons like right there. And Hi, I, Lily. I, I didn't even see it. Hello, Lily. I know what you, I know what you meant. I uh, my fingers. I'm always hitting the wrong keys. Oh, so what's everybody working on today. Let us know what you're doing. It's still it, like it's nice out here, but it's chilly. But yeah. by Wednesday, it's going to be in the high sixties, almost seventy degrees. Oh yeah, see, you get you get it a little bit warmer. It'll be about sixty two, sixty three here, and then it's going to cool down again to like more normal, like almost like early winter temperatures. But that's fine with me. Give me a few sunshiny, warm days here and there. I'm happy. I would love to find a camper before then. Yeah. And then take off and go. Um, it's the situation with the dog is probably going to happen tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh. So I would probably be thankful to have a few days just to get away. Get away. Um, it, it's, it's a it's a hard decision because like he'll run around the house but then you know you look at the blood works is complete liver failure and kidneys on their way and it's like how can that be you know but well you know all that that when those organs shut down there's a lot of uh toxins that build up in the body and um it does make them feel sickly you know like the flu achy because they're toxic their blood is toxic it's not being metabolized and filtered out like it should be you know that's yeah but, I mean, that's the thing they can't tell you how they feel and, right and it's like you know he's got the heart murmur he's got seizures he's got two big good size lumps on him and it's like do i wait until he looks like he's really sick or do I 
let him go before it gets to that. Yeah, point. but by that time, they're really miserable because they yeah. don't really like to show, you know, the pain or whatever. They can mask it so easily. Yeah, so that's, a, a, you know, I go over it and over it and in my mind, of course, because I don't want the guilt trip. And then. Hi, Jackie. We're we're both in Pennsylvania, but um, Doreen is a lot further south. She's in Lancaster. I'm up in Erie, the northwest corner, right on the lake. We get the brutal winters and, and colder temperatures. Yeah, I'm an hour, about an hour west of Philadelphia. Yeah, so I decided to just go ahead and... It's, it's an it's emotional for me trying to figure out what to do and I think I need to just do it and get past it and start the healing instead of dragging this on so yeah sometimes the waiting is worse I remember when my brother passed away and like I saw him two weeks before he passed away he was here in Pennsylvania and I was in North Carolina and they had given him six to eight months to live and he died two weeks later. But I remember, you know, being so sad and grieving because we knew that he was going to die within the next, you know, so many months. Right. And at the time when he actually died, I feel like I didn't even grieve. I was at peace because I had already done my grieving. Right. So anyway, on to happier subjects. People don't come here to get sad. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, how many do we have watching? Let me check. It says eight, so that's about six people. Let me see. Lily is taking a face class. What is a face class? Is that like how to draw faces, Lily? Yeah, let us know what that is, because it makes me think of doll making or something, like clay. Hi, Joanne. Joanne's on from Michigan. MI is Michigan, yeah? Yep. I think the YouTube side maybe shows up. Oh, no, there it is, Joanne. Yeah, okay. Hello, Joanne. I have my laptop kind of angled down so they can watch me punch. So I have to kind of tilt my head at an angle to read it down there. And then after I finish this, I'll let you see what I'm working on. This is for my new apartment that I'll have someday. And I don't know, because it's oval, I don't know how I'm going to display it. I might just get like a big tray or something to put it in. I've seen that done sometimes. And I think it's, I'll do like I'm going to do with the other one. I think I might just finish it, turn the edges back and take it to Hobby Lobby and see what I find. Mm -hmm. But I know when Teresa Kogut goes, like she goes when, you know, free, with me. like 50% off. Hi, Joe. How are you? I bought one of Joe's turkey patterns. Probably won't do it until fall. But I liked it. It was really primitive. I'll have to see that one. I am trying. Robin, do you want to talk about what you're doing? Oh, hold on and let me show this real quick before I go on. No, to it's okay. You don't have to put me on the big, like, the big screen. Yeah, but they all want to see it. So this is what I'm doing. Oh, that is cute. You can see that. And here's like the design that you'll see more. It's got little birds and stuff. But um, that's this sweet. Was, Love it. Uh, this is the pattern here. Oh yeah. Are you gonna do the background in the black and? Yeah. I, am. I like that. So you want to talk about what you're doing? <laughs> well, I have been desperate to get back into hooking. I mean, I love rug hooking. But when I was having so many problems with my back and my shoulders and stuff, 
I ended up, I had my frame. I sold that. I sold my cutter, sold almost all of my wool. I only had little pieces here and there left to do maybe. So you um, got a frame and cutter and you sold it. Yeah. This was three, about three years ago. So needless to say, you know, they're not cheap. So you can't just run out and get it when you decide, okay, I'm going to start hooking. So I had this foundation fabric, which I, I really don't even think it's not the linen that they use. It has a smaller weave. I think it's just a larger weave, Ada cloth. I got it at uh, Joanne's. But um, I had just gotten the uh, punch needle frame with the gripper edges, you know. So I thought, well, I can try to do this in yarn. I see a lot of people hooking in yarn. Oh, it's got to be easy. I was wrong. Um Hooking with yarn is not for the faint of heart. It's at least for me and what I'm doing and whatnot. Oh my gosh. Because number one, I have to twist the yarn to even get a hold of it with my needle sometimes. I mean, and it's fraying, so I have to pull that back out and redo it again. Um, the loops just go wherever they want. But a lot of people like that look, which I do like. But Personally, I do like the look better of the uh, wool strips, you know, but um, um, Lily is saying scroll up. I'm not sure. Is she talking to you when you're showing it? Scroll, uh, where do you I all need? I can oh, she wants to show us a pic. Yeah, but she can't. Oh, uh, I think maybe she's wanting you to scroll up with. Is that what you want, Lily, when she's showing that to you? To hold it up better? Yeah, let me put you full screen for a minute. Okay. There we go. Or maybe she was talking to me. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So. Let us know what you were wanting, Lily. Oh, telling you about the class. Okay. The class, you said you were taking the face. Can you read it? I'm looking here. The face class. Hooking faces. Oh, tips how to get more detail in the features, right? Is that with rug hooking with strips or is it like Oxford punch? Somebody asked on Facebook on the Rug Punch group. There's a group called Rug Punchers and Projects. A Rug Punchers and Other Projects. Yeah, and that is probably the Oxford. And it's all the Oxford. And um, somebody was Ooh, saying my eyes that are watering. they have the number 10 and they want to do more detail. And should they get the 14? And I have the 14 fine. And that's what I would use if I was doing detail. Uh, what, what size strips? Because I always did. I had a cutter and I had the number eight blade. So they were a little bit wi wider, more primitive. Um, I think I that's, did, right that's the most end. common one, isn't it? Pardon? Isn't number eight the most common? They're quarter Yeah, eight. it is pretty common. But now to do finer details, you get the, uh, I don't know. Now I can't remember. Do the Does it go up and make it finer or? The higher the number, the yeah, the smaller the the width of the, I'm not the strips. Sure. That's how the Valdani is. You know, I I never could get why those cutters cost so much money, and then I looked at it, and I was like, and it only cuts three strips at a time. You know, and they cost a couple hundred dollars. Oh, she's using different sizes. Oh, well, you know, I have a um. Oh, it's for card making. The die cutter machine. Well, this is yeah. mine's just a little crank one. I mean, but it's got the broad edge. And I've seen people cut wool strips with that. But I don't have very long plates for it. The so old cutter drag has all the stuff to do it, but you're gonna it's a pretty big investment. Really? Yeah. I think the die is like $120 and 
Yeah, I wow. have. I already have the machine. Um, big shot. Sis yeah, big shot. That's what mine is. Sissix big shot. I have the yeah. machine. And I have the long dye things. Oh, do you? Oh, she said she uses, they have a t Oxford 10 fine. Oh, you got I have own. the Oxford 10 normal and the 14 fine. And she said she only uses scissors. Um, to cut your wool strips? I've tried that, but they get kind of squiggly. <laughs> I had a, I have a long, a fairly good size uh, mat, rotary mat, and with a rotary blade and a long ruler. And I did it when I first started out the last time I, I was cutting my own strips with the rotary blade. There it's got my uh, stems and leaves done. That is so cute. I really like that. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm going to skip punch needle. I'm going to do some wool applique. And then I sat here and I thought about what I needed to do to do the wool applique. And I was like, nah, I'm just going to stick with punch needle. Didn't want to have to gather all your supplies. I didn't want to. I love the stitching part of wool applique, but I hate the prep. Yeah, yeah, like you were saying, I know. You got to iron it on. Well, draw your design onto your um, freezer paper, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sometimes I skip that when I'm doing it for myself. I'll just cut out like freehand shapes and stuff. Leaves. These, these are for me, um, but the um, the project that I want to do is a pretty big one. So oh. it's gonna be um, it's gonna be time consuming to prepare it. So I really um, need some hours on this channel, some watch hours, and I was thinking of doing, if I do this wool applique thing, to just put it on a live stream and let it run hey. while, while I'm doing all the prep work and people can come and go as they please. Right. Why not? Um, Yeah, that's what I was thinking, if I actually do it. Um, some people do that, like, I've seen people do it, like, on Thanksgiving. They just put the camera out in the kitchen while they're preparing <laughs> with their family. And people just come and go and chit-chat on their own in the chat, you know, and talk to each other. What did you say the name of your punch needle piece? I missed it. Are you talking to me, Tina? Mine is... It's by Threads That Bind, and it's called Bless This House. You can see it. I made a copy of it because I scribble and write notes on it because I'm changing the colors. So when I have a big project like this, I like to draw lines through the part I already did so that when I look at it to see what to do next, it kind of helps me to go right to the sections I still need to do. Because I've crossed out the other ones. But I sat yesterday and the, the lighting in here is really bad. <coughs> so during the day, it's great because of all the natural light in the windows. But so yesterday, I sat in front of the window. I sat in front of the window and picked all my colors. And I changed them completely from what I had picked the first night that I was getting this ready because it was nighttime. And I couldn't really see the colors good. So I changed all the colors yesterday. Like these oh, flowers, I, yeah, I, the flowers are supposed to be kind of yellowish gold, and I'm not really a yellow orange person. So I'm making mine with these two shades. So I do a lot of my own uh, when I do my paintings, my watercolors. Mm -hmm. My husband had gotten me a set of the very, they're really good watercolors, but there's only 18 colors. It's Sennelier, and um, they don't have uh, some of the, the hues, the tints, the, you know, shades that I like. So <clears throat> I'm always making all my own colors with my uh, watercolor paints, too. Can you, you know what's funny is, pardon? 
Can you like save what you don't use and put it in a little container? I do have a little, I have a little porcelain palette here that has some of the colors that I've used on my, like I just did that rooster and this was uh -huh. some of the colors and you just re-wet it. The only problem is, is sometimes you'll get fuzz and dust in it. So you have other, and that'll like get on your brush, but I just try to keep it clean. Um, Lily, uh, when I'm using right now, I'm using for this color that I'm using here is it's um, DMC and I'm using six strands. When I use the Valdani, I use number eight and I double it. I like to get a lot of coverage because then it's less punching. Yes. You get done That's faster. Funny. A lot of people have only ever used the three strands, and I just, I am too impatient for that. And I don't want to sit and separate it. And the Valdani three strands is too expensive. The Valdani for the coverage that you get with it. Yeah, the Valdani three strands is 27 yards, and the pearl cotton is 72. Yeah. So it's a huge difference for the same price. Yeah. Teresa Kogut actually just, because her and I discussed, she does a Whatcha Painting Wednesday uh -huh. on YouTube and Facebook every Wednesday um, at 2 o'clock. I'll have to set a reminder for that. Yeah, so um, she, she just paints and talks to you while she's painting. It's very casual. Anyway, we were talking about, I was telling her that I wish she used Valdani in her patterns because... Whenever And I do a lot of her patterns, but whenever I do them, I always use my own threads. I don't use the recommended threads because mm -hmm. it's Sky Works, most of it. And I said, they're just too expensive. And she said, really? No, I just broke my thread. So, okay, here's a learning thing. <laughs> can y'all see? Can you see that at all? I Let can see. You can? Let me go... I must have punched through the thread that was already there. Can you see it? And it frayed it. It's hard to do this. And I, I usually just cut it off and you start see, all over. Uh, do you see what it did? It cut it. Right. So what I'm going to do is snip it here. And then I'm going to put my threader through and pull this piece back through. Oh, good idea. This is three strands that it did, that it cut it in half. Okay. So yeah. Instead of re-threading the whole thing, I only have to get this part back through the eye, and I'll do that with my threader. So that was an unplanned tip. Teaching moment. <laughs> yeah, teaching moment. Teachable moment. And that happens very rarely when I break a thread like that. But I must have poked through it with the, the needle enough that it would split it. And now it's back to good. And I can start over. Yeah, anything I can do to avoid threading that needle again. <laughs> when I started punching again, I thought, oh, yes, this was the part I hated. I hate threading the needle all the time. And you know what Teresa said in her, if you watch her Floss 2 video, she, um, I think she posted it yesterday. But she talked about it and she said she's got so used to separating the threads that it just, it's nothing to her. Really? And I absolutely hate it because for punch needle, you have to pull a length and then you have to cut it and then you have to separate it and then you have to thread your needle. And then when that length is gone, you have to do the same thing again. Right. And with the Valdani balls, you just keep punching until you're done that color. Yeah. So she actually did a price comparison in her video yesterday. Oh. Which size needle and which number high? I am using the medium and probably less than five times I have used any other needle in probably... I don't even know what year I started doing a punch needle. I just always use the medium and I have it on number one. 
Oh, and I put this rubber grip on here. Can you see that? This is, it's a pencil grip from Dollar Tree. Ah. And it does, oh, I'm still on solo. Let me That's see. okay. Nobody needs to see me. <laughs> and I, um, it doesn't fit around it. it. I think it fits the CTR, but it doesn't fit. the ah. So I cut it and I thought, well, let me see, you know, if that works. So I cut it and I just put it around it and it works perfect. Hmm. You are just full of all the little And it doesn't slide. I thought it would slide and it doesn't. So I left the open part. If you can see, this is the part where there's no grip, mm -hmm. where the guide is. Right. Because that's the part that you should have your thumb on and punching towards yourself. So that reminds me that that's the part where I'm going to have my thumb and punch toward me. So I don't punch into threads and break them again. Um, but where your fingers are resting over here on the other side are on the grip. And I didn't have a lot of trouble with my hand. Like sometimes it would get sweaty, but it, I didn't have a lot of trouble with it, but it's, it does feel better with this grip on here and you get like six or eight in a package. So I have some backups. If you have somebody that lives near you and they do punch needle, get a pack and split them because it's only a dollar at Dollar Tree. And how many are in there? Eight? Six or eight. Oh, uh, I think wow. it's eight. And they're... um. Gotta they're love in, that Dollar Tree. They're in the school supply aisle, but they're not really with the school supply. They're more with the office supplies. Like the school supplies, when I go down the aisle, the pens and, you know, the ink pens and pencils and all are on the right side. And then half, and then on the left side is like teacher bulletin board stuff, you know, that all the cutouts that they can put on the bulletin board. And then halfway down that left side is where these were. But it's more like where the paper clips and stuff are. Yeah, Dollar Tree is my favorite store. The um, closest one to us is probably about two, eight miles away. Yeah, I have one three miles away. So, all right, let me see. What if the kit says three strands? Can you use six strands? You can use whatever you want. Teresa Kogitz always say three strands because that's what she punches with. But I'm not going to sit and separate. So I always use six strands. So Lily uses the CTR. Hey, there's 12 people here. Hello, everybody. Say hello. Say hello to us. Got to put my glasses up. I can't. So Lily likes the CTR. Um, I'm going to, you know what, Lily, the reason that I bought these pencil grips was to try with the CTR because it hurt my hand when I tried it. And so I just put it away. And I honestly, I don't even know for sure where it is. It's packed. So I was going to try the, the pencil grip on that to see if I liked it better. I'm just so used to this one. And there's really no reason to switch. But I wanted to try it out of curiosity. I think we like what we're used to. Creatures of habit. Yeah. If we miss any questions, type them again. Because we're both kind of working and not watching the chat the whole time. And if you're here lurking in the background, at least say hello in the chat and let us know that you're here so we can say hi back. And it's always interesting to find out where everybody lives and let us know like what state you're from. So because I need hours, if y'all are sitting and working on your crafts, if you go to my page, I'm actually going to try to show you this on my phone. Let me see. Go to YouTube.
Okay, so, oh, my so I'm coming. gonna go. I'm gonna go to YouTube. Let me go to Solo a second. Mayor. All right, so I'm gonna go to YouTube, and then up top here in a search bar, I'm gonna type in privies and prims. And it comes up with this. Let's show up. So then I'm going to tap up here at the top. And that takes me to the channel. Now, do you see, if you, even if you do this on the computer, you're doing it the same way. So where it's at right now is on home. And if you're looking at that on the computer and then you scroll up, it will not show all of my videos. You have to tap on the videos tab. And when you tap on that, then it shows you all of the videos so that you can see them. Now, the next one over is playlist. And if you click on that, you'll see they're grouped. So some of them say punch needle how to, some say we'll applique, some say live streams. Um, one is, um, Play all, I think it is. So let me see. I have uncounted cross stitch only has one because I've only done one video of that. Wool applique has five. Live streams has 11. Random stuff has 26. Like when I did the cover for the frame, that, that was just a random thing that doesn't really fit into the other categories. So that goes into random stuff. Pattern unboxing, um, punch needle how-to videos, and then all videos is there's 56 videos in the all videos. So if you tap on that, let's just say the all videos, and then it's going to list them all, and you hit the play button there, the red arrow. So if you hit that play button, or on your computer, I think it says play, it will play one after another as an autoplay. So if you're sitting there doing cross stitch or punch needle or whatever you're doing, this can be playing on the computer and you don't have to go to the next video or anything. It'll automatically do it for you. So that's a tip on how to watch the playlists. So you have across the top, well, home videos and playlists. So home really only tells you like a little bit about the channel. It doesn't, um, it doesn't show all the videos. You have to click on the videos tab to see the list of all of them. And then the playlist has it grouped. So if you just want to watch like the punch needle, how to videos, you would just scroll down and that would be this one. There's 21 videos on that and none of them are really long. So while you're working, um, doing your punch needle, cooking your dinner or whatever, you can have that playing and it'll just go from one video to the next until the playlist ends. So that's a tip for you to be able to watch those. And I also have another channel, if you like to camp. It's called Camping Therapy. And, well, let me go back. That's the Camping Therapy one. So if that little avatar comes up that's my other channel oh that cute little avatar that you drew up yeah 2 30 in the morning i like that though see that's cute so again when you do a search for the camping therapy this is what comes up but that's not actually the channel you have to tap up here next to the avatar and then it takes you to the actual channel so that's a little bit of YouTube education. Education. Yeah. So let me bring us back. So let me see. Got to go have class. We'll check out YouTube. Thanks, Lily. Thanks for coming. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Lily. Lily's from, she said, where did she say? Manhattan? Long Island, New Long York. Long Island, yeah. So Tina, I, you know what, Lily, you're saying it's easier to thread. I think it's exactly the same. The, she's saying the CTR is easier to thread. I don't see what any difference is. It's exactly the same. So Wendy is knitting while I punch. So 
Welcome, Wendy. And Tina's from Kansas. If we missed anything, type it again. If you're still here, Lily, tell me why you think that it's easier to thread the CTR because I, it's exactly the same. Only the threader, the CTR threader. Hi, is Mary. Teeny, teeny. Hi, Mary. She's from Wisconsin. Everybody's spread out. Be great if we could get like local groups together and everybody like when we can meet up in person safely. Right. It's been a long time. Yeah, so I used to teach the punch needle classes and um I think probably the last one I did was January or February of 2020. And then things started getting kind of iffy. And I told her, I said, I don't, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to sit around a table teaching women. And most of the students, you know, were older age. Yeah. I did have one young man. Now, I'm not sure if he was like 8, 10, 12, somewhere around that. He came to the class with his mom. And she said that he wanted to do it. And he had done some already on his own. He was like self-taught. Huh. And he ended up doing really well. And she emailed me, uh, I don't know, maybe like a month ago and asked me something about it, how to add the backing to an ornament, like to put a felt or wool backing on. Uh -huh. So I sent her a link to the video that I have on my channel. So, um, but she said he's still doing it and he's designed some patterns and everything. So, wow. So he's doing really good. Well, I see, I just unthreaded my needle and I probably need to rethread it with this again because I think I'm going to use this color for the bird's legs and the beak. So I caused myself more work. There's a question for you, Robin. Do you have a palette you choose just for primitive designs? A palette. Do you have a palette? A um, well, let's see. I was showing. Are you talking this. about painting, Wendy? Or yarns? Well, this is the first time I've ever done the yarn. Remember I said, I don't let me put lipstick on again. I don't like that feeling that it gives. I don't know why I do it. Just vanity, I guess. And and I don't think any of us have oh. screens that are good enough to um, to show details like that. <laughs> Mine doesn't anyway. I was gonna, you just said just colors. Oh, well, I try to stick with like a barn red. I like it more on the rusty side, but it's hard to get that with my watercolor sometimes, but the program I use on my computer, and then of course your wools and your threads. Um, the one thread that I had just used uh, by Valdani was a real pretty brick red. Um, oh gee, I, I don't even know if I have the little if I see it on, on the site, I'll, I'll recognize it. But anyway, so I go with a more rusty red. Um, I like the yellow that is more like an uh, ochre looking, you know, like mustardy a, ochre. Yeah. Like, a, um, yeah, they call it mustard yellow or antique gold. Right. I like that. And then the green, That's sometimes, is. pardon? It's kind of what this color is. It's it's like a brownish, right. tea, but yeah. just a hint of gold to it. Right, yeah, a little bit of brown to it, so it makes it look antique -y. Uh What else? The greens, 
I switch off sometimes depending on what I'm doing. I like to do a green that almost has a bluish hue to it. Um, but most of the time I end up with a green that is a grayish and a little bit of yellow to it. I, it's hard for me to describe I because I mix my colors in here, but I go for the same thing when I'm picking threads and, and uh, fabrics or wool or whatever. Let's see. So it's the red, the blue. Okay. Blue. Um, for more primitives, I go with the real gray blue, real, like, what do they call that? Army slate. blue, soldier blue. Slate blue. Slate, like a slate blue, right? So it's pretty much those. It's almost like your primary and, and couple secondary colors, but um, just in the different hues and tints. I, I I tint when I'm making my own paints. I tint it all down with either gray or brown to give it take that brightness out of it. You know, so that's pretty much the colors I use. Now, when I'm doing my other paintings, and even for some of my booklets, um, I'll I'll venture towards the peachy, rosy, peachy colors and um, turquoise, but not the, you know, not real bright turquoise, a more teal look. But yeah, I like black and gray for backgrounds and, you know, and various things too. I'm trying to think if I'm missing something. Well, of course, and it changes with the seasons, you know. Fall, of course, we all love our rusty pumpkin colors and, you know. I don't like the bright orange. I always go more towards the real dull down rusty orange. Burnt orange. Yeah. I always tell people, like, my favorite colors are um, like a coffee-stained flag. The coffee stained flag and olive, right. and olive green; those are my favorites. Yeah, that that I like that explanation. Stain the fabric. I used to, when I do punch needle, I used to uh, spray the finished item down with walnut ink. That I I made my own walnut ink stain from. Oh, and it's not fun. You boil the the skins and stuff from the black walnuts, um, yeah. Because the walnuts that we that you eat are English walnuts and black walnuts. And I tried I tried to even harvest the black walnuts. Those are a tough nut to crack, and the meat of the nut um, doesn't come out of the shell like a a. a a regular walnut, you know, that we eat, English walnuts, whatever. What about wow. if you find them on the ground and they're, because we have a walnut tree in my backyard. What if you find them on the ground and like they're already broke open? They're still uh, hard to get the meat out because um, the shell material is almost like wood, you know, it's hard. And in a walnut that you are normal, regular ones that we eat, um, there's spaces there so you can just dig and pull out a whole walnut. There's, uh, the, the black walnuts, I can't describe it, but the meat of the nut is, will go through like holes, little holes and, oh, wow. Yeah. We got, I got about a little tiny baggie one time from uh, a bushel of, black walnuts and black walnuts when you purchase them to eat they are more expensive and that's part of the reason why because it's harder to harvest the actual meat of the nut out of the shells but anyways yeah I like making my own um, stain I still have some I added 90% uh, alcohol to it and so it doesn't mold um Tyrannical Mystery Covers. Hello. Where did I see you? Oh, you were on the RV DJs this morning. He was saying that um, 
hold that thought a second. So Tina said with CTR, the threader is pulled through the channel and the needle eye all in one movement. Oh, so you don't have to separately pull it through and then put these threaders through the eye and pull the thread through the that too. I'm, I'm going to have to find mine and try that because I didn't know. Oh, you just. I didn't know that you did that. You curve it down through and then put it in and then just pull it. Is that what you're talking about, Tina? Okay, so Tyrannical Mystery, thanks for coming in. Okay, she said, yeah, that's right. Um, oh, okay. So he was saying in another live stream this morning, and I'm smiling because this was like very mischievous of him. Mm -hmm. Somebody talked bad about his mama, and <laughs> they hooked up a truck to the outhouse when the guy was in there. Or a port john I guess it was a port john And then they tipped it over with the guy in there, and it, and it was full. Oh, oh. He said he stunk for a long time, but he never talked about his mama again in, in front of him. There you go. Yeah, you don't talk about a mama. My kids are the same way. They can they can get sassy and lippy with me, but if anybody else does, who? It does not have a tag on the wire that gets in the way. Okay, so she's meaning this on here. It doesn't have this. So you just pull it through. I, I'm going to have to check into that. I'm going to have to get find mine. Mm. It might be with my patterns. I'm not sure. Oh, I I didn't get very much done. I started okay, doing I'm going to try this. Look, I'm going to try. I'm going to go through the eye. And, and then... Down. And then I really have to bend it. Let's see if I can do this. You're going to break your threader. It might be because the CTR is shorter that it works. Is the wire any thinner, more pliable? It's very much thinner, yeah. Oh, that's why then. Like It's almost invisible. Oh, yeah. That's why. And my threader is crimped at the end. It's bent. So it's not it's not doing it. I can't do it with this. Yeah. You know, I put the CTR back in the bag and then I put it away somewhere, but it might be with my um Um oh when he was asking me, I'm hooking with yarn. Um uh, oh, sorry. Oh, gosh, now I'm getting it backwards. There we go. Not an easy thing to do because uh, the yarn wants to um, split really bad when you go to grab a hold of it with the, the hook. Yeah, so it's hard to grab a hold of the yarn. The loops fall where they want. Um, but a lot of people hook with yarn specifically. What is her name? Diane Fitzpatrick? I don't know. She's a pretty famous uh, rug hooker, and she hooks almost exclusively with yarn now. Different, you know. I don't think I've ever seen anybody hook with yarn. Oh, yeah. It yeah. works on the ultra with the large needle. Okay. Huh. Never knew that. Well, I took, the, I punched the one bird and then I took it out because I don't like the color. What was it? It was like a light green. What are you going to do? I might do it kind of a yellowish, like a mustard yellow. Oh, one of your least favorite colors. I know, but it's just the little birds. It looks oh, like maybe a tan. Would that show up on the background? There's a lot of tan already, but it oh, looks, okay, never mind. the color that it looks on the pattern is the same color I was using. I mean, I didn't have that exact number because I'm using what I already have. I don't go out and follow the pattern and buy all the colors. Right. Um, hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, Wendy. See, I knew what you meant. Never seen a green bird. I'm the queen of, of misspelled words and mistyped out words. <laughs> 
biggest one is love. I always hit the eye. So it's, oh, I live that. Oh. <laughs> ah. you know? And then four, and I end up fur. So I talk like fur. I'm going to go get me something for this instead of F-O-R. It's F-I-R. So I just kind of laugh at myself. And sometimes I'll correct myself. And sometimes I just let it go. <laughs> Oh, funny. Did you see what Wendy said? It's probably just a really splitty yarn. I have tried a few. And what I do, though, is when I put my needle, my hooking hook down in and go to grab the yarn underneath, I'll twist the yarn so that I make it tighter and it'll catch better on the hook here. But then what happens is my yarn ends up looking like this. But but it un, it see it undoes itself pretty good. But I used a really thick yarn in here, um, a thinner yarn, uh, one that was more. Oh gosh, I wish I could remember the names of some of these because I never really I I know how to knit and crochet, but I've never really done it as a pastime or you know um if you ever come to lancaster go to lancaster creative reuse as i call it the thrift store for crafters oh yeah there's so much yarn and it's so cheap really see that's one of the things that i like about hooking with the yarn is yarn is so much more or so much, how would I say that properly? It's more affordable. Yeah, because I want to say less, more or less expensive, but that's using kind of an oxymoron, more or less expensive. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's more affordable. My phone corrects me incorrectly at the time, drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the autocorrect? Oh, my gosh. Sometimes that's, yeah, that can pick up and start writing some words that you really did not at all mean to write. You know what I learned is I, in my car, like, sometimes I can do that speech to text. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, like, I'll have a live stream on when I'm driving, which I shouldn't do because, you know. But you don't really have to watch it. You just listen, you know, mm -hmm. if people are just on there talking. So if I want to say something in the chat, I can just tap one button and say it, and then it sends it for me. Oh, wow. But sometimes you might get the wrong thing. Yeah. So there's a channel called Diary of a Family. And they're full-time RVers, and the lady's a travel nurse. Oh, wow. And the dad is the stay-at-home dad, but he does um, computer work, He, you know, so he can work remotely. Mm -hmm. But their channel is called Diary of a Family. And somebody, whoops, somebody thought it was diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> Diarrhea family? Yeah. yeah. Diary of a family. That's funny. So for all of you that are watching, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button. When I get to a thousand, I'm having a giveaway. So I'm um, not that far off. I'm in the 800s already. Wow. I'm going to put a little plug here. I am only about 27 people away from a thousand followers on my Instagram. So if anybody has an Instagram channel, just look for Robin Bird in the Hand Primitives and follow I didn't know me. They had stuff like that on Instagram. Pardon? I didn't even know that they had like on Instagram where you have like goals that you get to and stuff. Well, I guess when you're doing the stories, um, you know, the little video, short clip videos and stuff, you get access to um, a few more options. 
Bye, Tina. Thanks for coming. Bye, Tina. Sometimes when I turn my frame, it's hitting my laptop, and that's why, in case anybody's wondering why the screen moves. It's a very large frame. Oh, let me show this, my wall art here. This is my wall art. This is what I finished last week. I was working on it on the last live stream. I just taped it up there for fun. But um, let me show this. It is called Petals and Pennies. And it's by the old tattered flag. That is beautiful. I love it. Didn't it come out good. So this That's is really kind of showing the real colors more so than like when I take a picture of it, it comes out really bright. Right. But I really like it because it, when I take a picture, it comes out like a Christmas red mm -hmm. and it's not Christmas red at all. See now on my Mac, it looks like a Christmas red on my phone. It looks more like a, um, like the barn red or, yeah. uh, you know, that's, and that's what it is. It's more the primitive red. Right. Yeah. So this called for the orangey golds, like where the blue is. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be like an orange and I don't like orange. So I changed it to blue and I really like it. Uh -huh. very, and then very of course, nice. like I said, it's supposed to have straight lines, but I decided to leave it scalloped. I do love those scalloped edges. I add a lot of scalloped edges to my, my designs and stuff too. Thank you, Joe. Wendy um, asks, how will you finish that, Doreen? That I'm not sure yet, Wendy. I think I'm going to, um, you know, cut the edge off. I'm going to turn the edges back and leave it scalloped on the edge. And then I think I'm going to take it to Hobby Lobby and look at their frames and trays and things like that and see what I can find. Or I thought about putting it on a stool. So I'm not... I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do with it. Now I have tape on my wall. When you said that stool, it just reminded me I'm thinking of like wood and whatnot. My husband is looking at getting, um, what is the name of it now? On Marketplace on Facebook, local. Um, he has seen a few of those. It's the power tool that it can do like i don't know five different functions like a, a router um hi pat a shaper. thank you pat oh hi pat a router well it, the it's like a oh uh, wouldn't i go blank right now um Hmm. A lathe, not a lathe. A lathe does. Well, things. it does have a, a shaper, like a lathe. Almost, you can do uh, corbels and, or you know, legs for thing. Uh, oh, well, anyway, he's looking at getting something like that and getting back into doing woodworking because he he has made me cabinets and. Uh, but then that way, I'll have all my little ditties to put my finished pieces on too when I sell them. You can make him work like Teresa's husband does. Yeah. yeah. A mayor. How's her husband doing with his leg? I haven't talked to her. I hope a lot better. He was doing really well. So okay. a Dremel. Wendy's asking if it's a Dremel. A Dremel well, it's a big, is like, like a little a, held. Hmm. Get the rest of that Ugh, old lipstick off my lips here. Uh, I'm ready to go ask him what it is just because it's going to drive me crazy. But it, it's um, a big thing like a table saw, but it has other things on it with various different functions. can do more than one thing, not just a table saw. I don't know what that would be. I have a Dremel tool. I use that for uh, just doing little things here and there. Um, I have a Harbor Freight Dremel tool that was six ninety nine. 
Harbor Freight. That's my husband's. That's his crack, like Hobby Lobby and Michael's is for me. You know Don't what I do? When I make a um, horn book and when I drill the hole, it always splits the wood. Oh. And so it's all rough in the hole. So I take that little sander and put it in there and sand uh -huh. it in. Yeah. And it makes it more primitive because it's not perfect circle. Right. So Pat said, she's sorry she's late. She's been busy sewing. That's fine, Pat. We're just chatting away. Well, what are you making, Pat? We have eight people watching. It's nice to have folks come and visit today. If you have to go, Robin, just let me know. We can stop at any time. I'm I have trying no, to read here. I have no plans. No, once again, I didn't eat though, you know, and it's what time in the afternoon? Four or something? You should have a pack of crackers or something with you. I know, I should. No, my almonds. I am addicted to those blue diamond smokehouse almonds. Oh, I eat those. Let me show you what I bought. This was so expensive and I bought, I was like, okay, I'm going to splurge one time. Nuts are expensive. This was yes, like they are. 98. Oh, yummy. Yes. Yeah. It, I mean, it's big. It's 14 and a half ounces, but it was like almost $13. It has pistachios and almonds and cashews. Do you know but what? I, I, that's a one time I'm going to splurge because instead of sitting here eating chips and junk, uh -huh. this is what oh, I yeah. There's less carbs, but co well, you know me, I do the keto. Um, see, I can't. I said she's language. been making a heart table runner. Ooh, is it like a quilt or hand sewing? What would tell us how you're making it? You have to do the replay, Pat. And I, I was talking about the um, playlist on my channel and how to do the playlist so that while you're sewing the videos can just be running. And it just goes like right from one to another if, if you do the playlist. Like a continu continuous loop. Yeah. And it does, well, it does stop after the last one. It doesn't start over again. Right. Oh, my dear, I think I am going to head out of here. You know what? And I said that this thing wasn't slipping, and it didn't before, but now it is. And I wonder if it's because maybe I have it turned the wrong way or something. Maybe it needs to be my – no, that doesn't even feel comfortable to have my thumb on it. I don't know what changed because the last time when I used it, it didn't slip. But today I've had to move it back up twice. See, I need a gripper because, um, you know, how I have that problem with my thumb and my finger. I can't really, this is the most I can bend my forefinger and my thumb, I, no matter what I do, I can't bend it. I, I tore a tendon or something in here. Well, anyway, so I, you talked about not splitting your threads a lot. I do because... I'll be holding this, and because I have to hold, I can't really grip it the right way. My thumb won't go around it. Mm -hmm. I have to hold it way down here and then just rest my finger on here. It'll start turning on me. So a gripper, I think, then would stop that from happening. Yeah, I mean, know? I've had to move it back up twice, but it's no big deal. It, it's not like you have to take it off and put it back on. It's just... You just grab it and move it back up. Right. And, and for a dollar, try it out. Right, yes. I'm thinking there's eight in a package. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do with the other seven? Oh, I've got grandkids in school. They could always use them on their pencils and stuff. You yeah, know. but keep a spare. Yeah, right. Just in case. Yes. So I am going to leave, but it was nice being here and nice chatting with people. Okay, let me stop for a minute, and we'll show our progress. Go ahead and show. 
Oh, I didn't make a lot of progress. I can't uh, multitask. And give your... Um, I can't Etsy walk and chew gum. <laughs> your Etsy shop, you want to tell them what your Etsy shop is? Uh, it is Bird in the Hand Prims. Um, they made me shorten it years ago when I opened up my Etsy. They said it was too long. I tried to make it Bird in the Hand Primitives and... They said no, so I just shortened primitives. So bird in the hand prims. I have my patterns, and um, some are full actual patterns for punch needle and some dolls um, that have all the detailed instructions, supply list, and color graph, and everything. Some are just doodle booklets or individual designs. So... Go take a peek. All right, let me bring back. And my Etsy shop is priviesandprims.etsy.com. And this is what I got done. So what that I did is really sweet. What I did today was the stems. I got the flowers started. And before, right before I went on, I did the words. So people always say the words look messy and they do look messy until you fill until in you get them. around them. Mm -hmm. Once you fill in around them, it, it all looks fine. Right. Yeah. Because that just comes in and tightens up the loops. And most of the time it puts the loops where they're supposed to be laying. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise you do. I think they call it park it. Yeah. Right. What I do is I take the end of my scissors. Like if like this brown was punched into the the beige. I just m close my scissors and use it and just move it around where it goes. And they call that parking it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, we're going to sign off. So um, do the playlist if you have time, guys, and you just want something to run in the background. Pat said she's quilting the table runner. Oh, yeah. And Wendy said, oh, nice yeah. to chat with you both. Take care. And we appreciate everybody coming in and um, maybe we'll do this next week. We're not sure. We just kind of go spur of the moment mm -hmm. and decide what we're going to do. So everybody have a blessed day and yes, happy crafting. And it's Teresa Kogut has shirts that say create every day. Sometimes I just sit here and stare at YouTube and watch different videos all day. And I do nothing but watch videos and I'm like, pick up something and work. Mm -hmm. on Be productive. So I've been trying to set my phone aside. Oh, I can show a couple draw. Well, I did put them on Facebook and I think Instagram. I did a couple new drawings. Oh, the the drawings, yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing the chicken, show the colored chickens. Oh. I have those right here, my paintings. Here's the one, the polka dotted. Rooster, is that good in there? That's good. I think those are cute. Hold on, I'll put it bigger. I can't see. There we go. Now, are these patterns are available in your Etsy shop? Yes, yes. The the two roosters. I think they're. It's just called folky roosters. And here's the other one, the farm life. And I I really was thinking of my daughter in law with this. She's got. Chicken. She even bought me some, but she's keeping them. She takes care of them. I want to turn the head around on that one. <laughs> really? Yeah. It, no. <laughs> no. Whenever, uh, whenever I see like, because you do some of your chickens and birds like that, and the heads turn backwards, and I'm like, turn the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, birds do that stuff, you know. They're. <laughs> yeah, they can turn their head all the way around like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right, guys, well, it's been fun. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks everybody. Thank you, for Robin. Coming. See you next time. Bye. Hit the thumbs up before you leave. Yes. <laughs>